Now, his watershed flows into the Mississippi. And in the Mississippi, we have massive flooding, of course, more often than we'd like. And we have a large dead zone down in the Gulf of Mexico. A recent report from the US EPA said that we have to cut nitrogen and phosphorus loads in the waterways, in the Mississippi, uh, by 45% to get the Gulf dead zone down to a reasonable size, which is twice the size of Rhode Island. Well, Gabe has smoked that. He's uh, beat that by a long shot. And one can imagine, let's scale up his successes to the Midwestern and the Mississippi watershed, and we'll be achieving a lot of economic benefit through the reduced flooding, through the reduction in the nutrient pollution. I think Gabe and the cocktail cover cropping work in North Dakota, 16 inches of rainfall, is a really good illustration of producer innovation leading to the possibility of the rest of society saving a lot of money. And the rest of society, if they want to incentivize other producers to do what Gabe's doing, it would probably be smart for them to jump the gun and figure out a way to pay people to do this. Because the rest of society, we all used to, we all used to be farmers. Now the rest of society is sort of suffering its pains and waiting for us to figure out how to fix the land. And we're taking a long time. <laughs> we're not going really fast. There's a few of us. But I come to these conferences and I hear too often, well, if only my neighbor would do it and so forth. We're not getting it done on our own. I think it would be uh, advantageous to cities to jump the gun and figure out how to pay us to get the work done. So filling in the gaps moving forward. I think there's some tools and capabilities to facilitate these markets that are actually well developed, increasingly so every day. I don't know how many people were lucky enough last night to see Greg Simon's presentation, I think on the fifth floor by the elevator. <laughs> Greg has been doing superlative management, superlative monitoring, and combining ground monitoring and remote monitoring. And what he's done is quantified the provision of environmental benefits across very large hundreds of thousands of acre landscapes. And it was pretty profound uh, to see the work that he's achieved. What do we need to make these kind of markets happen? We need managers who can deliver. And I think events like this and the work that we do back home are all pieces of us becoming better and better land managers. We need to be able to monitor the changes to soil properties and translate them into the economic benefits that the cities are after. We need to be able to model that and to play with scenarios. What if this? You know, if our policies led to this increase in soil cover and soil organic matter and aggregation and water infiltration, what would happen to the economics of our region? Over the last three or four years, I've really been paying a lot of attention to the technological tools that are available to do this. And what's amazing is they're out there. They're available. We can harness them. It's taken me a long time to put them all together. Information technology is a little bit expensive on the front end. But it's happening. A lot's already available. There's only a few more steps until we all could be just at night gaming the future of our watersheds or the Mississippi watershed or whatever and tracking the economics that could be realized through all this. So we need to be able to evaluate the benefits that come from the soil. We need to plan the sort of arrangements that whole watersheds can operate under. We need to broker the deals, and we need to execute, both on the payment end and on the land management end. One piece that's hard for me is that 15 years of really concentrated trying to think about whole watersheds. I want to be able to think in watersheds. It's continuously challenging to be able to do it accurately. And I spend so much of my time doing it. And then I think about. I'm lucky enough to have some exposure to investment bankers and so forth. And these guys really struggle with this stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like Greek to them. Or if they're men, it's like trying to understand women. It's very difficult. <laughs> so we need to be able to think in whole watersheds, underground, above ground, across time, and to put a price tag on different scenarios. And I think that the information technology, I know it is, it's available right now, but it needs to be streamlined and made usable by us with better interfaces. Monitoring is the other piece of it. Uh, when we started Carbon Farmers of, the, of America, we started with an agronomic monitoring methodology. It was developed with us uh, 
by soil scientists. And it was very good in terms of traditional monitoring for purposes of nutrient amendment and stuff like you would do with soil testing in Vermont farming. But as I got further and further into it, there were some bugaboos, soil spatial variability. Soil's really different here or here. It's a big challenge. And the other thing, if I was just measuring carbon, that's all I was really measuring. Carbon's a great indicator of a whole range of other services um, and the functionality of the soil. But it's before, like I said, if you really want to put it together, how are changes to soil properties in, uh, affecting the functioning of a whole watershed or a whole farm? We need to understand more. We need to understand the soil cover, the aggregation and crumb structure and infiltration. We need to understand the depth of the topsoil. Um, we need to understand the soil biodiversity. And we need to understand how variegated these patterns and properties are across a 100-acre field or across a 100,000-acre watershed. In facing that challenge, I started looking and going through lots of monitoring methodologies. And what I did, I, was, I got lucky. I found uh, a really bright guy who put his whole life into understanding soils. And he invented a technology called the Soil Information System. And he was able to do everything that I was looking for. And we actually just ran our first real monitoring event just a few months ago, and we'll be generating those maps soon. But I feel excited about it because the old criticisms that oh, we can't trade for environmental services based on soil because soil is too variable and so forth. It's absolutely not true. Um, it isn't true in a lot of, just with a lot of traditional monitoring methodologies can give us very good results. But with technologies like this, and this isn't the only one, although it's certainly the best one that I've found, we can really see underground. Uh, this event, this fall in Virginia, some people find religion or fall in love, I got to see underground and it was a big, big day for me.